Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. I'm Matt, thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I put out a question earlier today about what series should I start, and I asked, should I start a series from Mary Orvis Marbury's favorite flies and their histories? And I got a pretty positive response. A lot of folks said, yeah, hey, I'd like to see some of those. I wanna start the first one today. I'm taking it from Plate M, which is the first trout fly plate in the book. And as crazy as it sounds, I'm picking probably the hardest fly on that plate. I probably shouldn't have done that, but hey, why not? Now, what do we know about the Allerton? Well, we know it's older than 1882, it's in the book. And Marbury mentions it was created by Robert G. Allerton from New York City. Allerton was the treasurer of the Aquasic Angling Association, which, interesting fact, they were chartered in 1879 up on the Rangeley Lakes in Maine, and they're still around. So how I envision this, it was an elite fly fishing club up in Maine where the rich folks from New York City went up there to vacation. Now about the fly, Marbury does say that maybe it should have been tied on a, a bigger hook and called a lake fly, but she did say that it's also tied in pretty small hooks and used for the brook trout up in New England. And that's how I'm gonna do it today. I'm tying this on a size 10, so it's just a standard trout wet fly. Now one other note, this is not really a fly for beginners. It's kind of challenging, but hey, don't let that stop you. If you got the materials and you wanna try it, give it a shot. What's the worst thing that could happen? Well, you tie a messy fly. I keep a spaghetti can here of messy flies. If the fly is just so bad, it's not even gonna go into my backup boxes, I put it in a spaghetti can. So that's my advice, try it. I think it's a cool looking fly. I think you'll like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, the Allerton. Now here's what I'm going by. This picture right here, I just printed this offline. I uh, wrote Allerton from Marbury's book, Plate M88. So I'm trying to match this guy right here. It's uh, a little hard to see exactly, you know, what the fly looks like when you're looking at these old 130 year old um, plates in a book. So if you can find anything online, sometimes that helps. Now I'm tying this on a size 10 wet fly hook. It's a 1X long, and I'm gonna use black 70 denier UTC. So lay a base down all the way back to the start of the bend. Now this thing does have a tag, so I'm gonna catch in some mylar in small, gold and silver. Oh, I didn't mention this Backdrop. I'm using a green backdrop. I hope it's not too distracting, but the blue, when I wrap that blue hackle with the blue backdrop, couldn't really see it at all. So I had to switch it up a little bit. I hope this works okay. So just catch in this small tinsel and then, you know, gold side toward the hook. So when you flip it and wrap it, you will be seeing the gold. Now I'm using small just because I want a cleaner tail, it's gonna take a few more wraps. It might take four wraps, go back to get a decent size, you know, two, maybe three millimeters of a tag right there. So when you get the length you want, just wrap it back over on itself and take it right back up front. And take a look at it before I catch it off. That's fine right there. So let's back this thread off two turns right here, and then we'll catch it in. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now for the tail on this, some barred wood duck. Beautiful feathers here. Um, and if you don't have barred wood duck, well, I probably wouldn't tie this fly without it because it's kind of one of the signatures of it. But if you don't have it, I suppose you could take some light colored mallard flank and a magic marker and just have at it. But take a little slip. I'd say this is probably 10, 10 fibers or so. And it's a fairly long tail. You want some of these, you know, the small black and white ones showing right there. So I'm gonna go about that length right there. Just a little pinch wrap on top. I'll do two wraps and then check my position. You know what? If your feather has a natural bend to it, 
just try to get the natural bend going up. I think that will look a little bit better. So maybe that right there. Let's try that again. Okay, I think that's gonna look fine, but I need to take it a wrap or two back. Okay, that's gonna look decent. Now I'm just going to loose wraps, capture this in right here. It can be part of the underbody. Okay, now some tighter wraps going back to where I catch in the hackle. Now here is another conundrum potentially. The original has blue hackle. Now, blue hackle is not that common, except maybe this strong saddle hackle. You know, you, there's a lot of this in blue for people who tie big flashy streamers, but you really, even the smallest feather from a strong saddle is not gonna have be long enough or short enough feathers. So what I've got, I've got a grizzly, you know, half cape. It's dyed blue. Uh, and it does have the grizzly in there, but when you put it on, you really won't be able to tell. And what I've done, I'm gonna tie it in from the small end. I've stripped off the feathers from half of it. And if you don't do that, it's just gonna be a little bit bushier than I think you'd want. So I'm going to capture it in all the way back right here, but well, not all the way back from the tail, because I'm gonna put a wrap of my gold floss right behind this hackle. So go ahead, after you've caught it in, take your thread back up to right behind the eye and take your gold tinsel. So if you know, a lot of you do know, but this, you know, silk kind of, well, this is synthetic tinsel, but it, it's got the properties of silk. It's a little bit translucent when it's in the water, when it gets wet. So you kind of want two layers with the black thread underneath, if I only did one layer of this floss, uh, when the fly gets wet, you wouldn't even see much of the yellow. It would just look like a dark body. So that's why I'm catching it in up front and I'm gonna wrap it all the way to the back and then back up front. That way I'll have two layers of it. Now take your time when you get to the back. You might have to lift that hackle up. It might take a couple of wraps behind it. You might have to tighten up this silk a little bit, this floss. And you don't want to get a big bump back there like I'm kind of starting to get. But, oh, I think we're gonna be fine. So now just take it back up with your second layer all the way up to the front. Okay, now when you've got your body, wrapped all the way to the front. Go ahead and snip this off. Now we're going to wrap this blue hackle. And this is where the magic happens. So it's a little bit tricky. You, you want to wrap it and maybe after that first turn you have it oriented right to where you know the the side without you know the barbs is going against the hook. So take your time here and fairly open wraps, evenly spaced open wraps. And you might just have to preen a few of them back as you go, but if you can handle it and manage it right, you should be able to just lay them on here and have them sticking out perpendicular to the hook and it, you will get the, the desired look. Okay, now when you've got it all the way up front, just zigzag that through there, capture it in. Try not to trap any of your hackle fibers here before you have to snip this off. I think we look okay right there. A couple of extra wraps just to get it locked in really tight. Now, it's time for the the red slips of duck for the wing. And this is also a little bit time consuming. When you take your two feathers, now Edward asked about this um, in a comment, 
yes, you definitely want a left feather and a right feather. You can see where, um, where I'm clipping them out. Now, also one thing worth noting, if, if you have a hard time getting your wings to lay down perfectly for these old school winged wet flies, you can cheat a little bit and just make them a little bit shorter, or, or not shorter, but a little bit thinner. So that is probably a little bit less than a hook gap, which a hook gap would be the standard, but I'm making it just a little bit less. Um, you might want to push those back, it makes it easier. But these are just a little bit thinner, not as wide um, as you might make them. So take your time here. You get about three tries to put these on before you will mangle them up so much that you can't use them. So find your length, just about to the, the bend of the hook, and then switch your hands. Now, here's the trick. Hold them pretty tight with your material hand. I'm pinching this actually very tight, and I'm doing a pinch wrap in here with a thread in between my fingers, and then I'm going to kind of just move it forward as I pull down tight. And then I will do one more wrap and take a look at it. And are those coming off the top like I want? I think so. I think we can live with that. Um, if you didn't, and if they were all canted, let's just take, put one more wrap for fun. And look at them. Are they coming straight off the hook like you want? I think so, or, or close enough. And if they were canted too much or, you know, lopsided, just unwrap your thread, try it again. And you can get about three tries before you know, these feathers are just too torn up to, to use. So you try it two or three times, and then if you have to, cut a couple more slips. Not the end of the world, it just make the fly take, you know, a couple extra minutes. Okay, so one more securing wrap right there, and just get in here and snip these as close as you can get them. And the shorter you can get it, the cleaner your head will end up being. So is that short enough? Mm, I think so. We're gonna we're gonna live with it. Just gonna push these up here with my fingernail, my thumbnail, and then just try to capture them with the thread. So take it right back up to the, the eye and then build a ramp and try to capture all these butt ends in as I build my head. Okay, I'm fine with that head. Let's do a four turn whip finish here. And I'm gonna put my scissors in here, pull my thread tight and just kinda saw it off. And as you can tell, you, you really can't tell that that was a, a dyed grizzly saddle hackle. It looks just pretty blue, or not a saddle hackle, it was a cape. But yeah, so that blue right there looks pretty blue. So that's it, my friends. An Allerton, very old school winged wet fly from Mary Orvis Marbury's favorite flies and their histories. So I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.